With the release of Varlamor came a brand new landmass full of content, easter eggs and new places to locate. So today I want to go over all the interesting facts you might have missed and give you some fun knowledge about the land of Varlamor and everything in it. So let's not waste any more time and jump right in. Number 1. During the eclipse fight in Brilliant Moons, there is one specific mechanic on the boss that teleports you to the middle and you have to face the boss to dodge any damage taken. But there is a way to avoid any damage with one single item. If you remember, I made a video a few months ago talking about the easter ring and how it allows players to stall any bind effects. This was specifically very useful during the Saracnus boss fight. That same stall works during this demi boss as well. And if you use the easter ring at the correct time, you are free from any bind effect and don't have to worry about the rest of the mechanic. Now take this with some caution, as it is unintended and will likely get fixed at one point in time. Because essentially you can dodge most of the mechanic with this one simple trick and I doubt that's what Jagex had in mind when they made this boss. Still, despite that, it's a fun little mechanic that takes advantage of the old school runescape stalling system. Also, keep in mind, during the same mechanic, the Eclipse boss can also be just entirely killed with the Crystal Halbert spec, which is another way to avoid the rest of the mechanic. And once the hit points reach a zero, you are taken out of the fight immediately despite the special attack continuing for other players. Number 2. If you go to the Runelite plugin hub and use the detached camera mode, you can find some very interesting statues and places around Varlamor that are not quite mapped yet. There is this Chambers of Seric Olm statue just right out of Illus Fortis and we can see 3 players fighting the Olm here. This could be a reference to the Hailstorm Mountain Group boss that's coming with Varlamor part 2 and the Olm is just currently a placeholder for that fight. Right next to it is a square grey block that kinda resembles Desert Treasure 1 Final Arena. You have four crystals on either side with all of their own colors and this might be related to some quest or minigame that comes with Varlamor part 2. On the next island over we see a town called Aldarin that also comes with Varlamor part 2 and the only meaningful thing currently here is the newest house portal we might get in few months. And finally, inside the Borelius Moons dungeon is a completely new section of the map and it could be an extension to the Borelius Moons minigame or maybe a continuation to the questline as we all know the demi bosses inside aren't really killed during our fights. So I'm really excited to see what Jagex is cooking up with this one. If you want to see all these places yourself, you have two options. Either go to the site osrs.world or download the Runelite plugin Detached Camera. Number 3. There is currently a massive easter hunt going on because apparently you can obtain these red tokens by just interacting with the environment around you. Like for example, killing a buffalo just outside the city will give you one token. Breaking down blessed bat bones into bone shards will give you another token. Digging at this exact spot will give you another token or even just fishing for preems in the brilliant moons minigame which also has a chance to obtain the red token the tokens themselves do not stack however you can have multiple tokens if you use the drop trick and it seems that you can only obtain one token per day that's it so if you already got your token from any sources you have to wait until the next day to gain another one players are currently brainstorming together to figure out what these red tokens are for and i'll leave a link down below for osrs crack the glue discord where people have come together to figure this out. Also, if you want to see more Varlamor content ranging from guides, money makers, or videos like this, make sure to subscribe to not miss out on that. Thank you. Mm. Okay, let's do a quick fire round now. There is a duelist near the Colosseum that could be a reference to the Path of Exile duelist class. If you wear cat ears while petting the dog, you will get a unique dialogue. If you talk to the curator in the Illus Fortis Museum, he will assign you a task to find all the beheaded statues in Varlamor. There are a total of 10 statues. If you enter the Colosseum and run to the back of it, there will be 3 guards all with their own dialogue. One of them will say you shall not pass. There is also a character outside the Colosseum called Minimus, which is a callback to the movie Gladiator and a character named Maximus. The Diomed offers a new prayer training method that can give you up to 2 million prayer experience an hour, making it in theory the best prayer training method in the game. If you go to the Sunset Ghost next to the Hunter's Guild, you can find a hammer, iron bar, and some anvils to smith on which technically gives you infinite smithing experience for free. If you also make helmets you can sell those back in the nearby store for some GP. 
In the Borelius Moon, you can play a mini game while fishing and align your fishing net according to where the fishes are going, which yields you up to three times more food than just AFKing the net itself. And finally, it took approximately 16 hours for the very first completion of the Colosseum, and the honor went to the player named Port Cazards. Congratulations. Okay, time to get back to our regular schedule of fun and interesting facts that you might not know about. Number four. In the city, there is a pond that has a big fishing net spot. This is one of the only ways to get the AFK house keys because the pond spots barely move. If you don't know, you can use house keys to gain massive thieving experience and a chance for the rocky beds. It's a new thieving activity that came with Varlamor and is an interactive way to access the house, steal some valuables for money and then leave. What you can do is use this pond to stack up on house keys with fishing and then use up all the house keys to gain money and valuables. It is a great alternative to your normal thieving training. Plus, a little extra is that the big fishing net pond also gives you a chance to obtain clues, so you get two in a one deal. Number 5. The newly released mixed armor set that comes with the hunter skill is a great way to upgrade your mid-level gear as it offers similar range bonus to black dragon height. Plus, it has slightly better defensive bonus. And the best part is, each of the pieces also gives you strength bonus. That's why it's called mixed armor. The making of the armor itself is pretty easy. You come to the fur shop in the hunter guild, you purchase mixed height based and you add another fur on top of that to make the armor. For the top and the boots it's sunlight fur, for the legs it's fox fur and for the cape it's jaguar fur. Not only does the armor work really good as an alternative to black tea hide, but it also works decently well with the new hunter spear. To make the hunter spear yourself it requires one tea clock, five jerboa deals and five hunter spear tips. Or you can just buy them from the GE and they do work with Ava's accumulator as well as they are stackable ranged item just like Ara. So if you're looking for a new mid-level armor set for really cheap that works both as a melee armor and ranged armor, try out the new mixed armor set yourself by grading it in Varlamor or buying it from GE. Number 6. In the town of Camp Dorom, after completing the Brilliant Moon quest, you are opened up to tons of new shops around the city that have amazing benefits for medium and new players. In the bar, there are a few items that can be used to make money. For example, the Infinite Cider is 2 GP in the shop, but sells for 500 GP in the GE. In the same shop, there are also Infinite Stews and Meat Pies, which heal for 12 hit points and are sold for 15 GP each. The rune shop has one of the few places in the game with low requirements that sells nature runes directly. The baked goods shop has access to garden pies, fish pies and red berry pies, all used for either plus 4 boost in the respective skill or as a quest item. And finally right next to the stores there is calcified rock spawn that gives you blessed bone shards, which gives access to the new AFK prayer training method I mentioned before, so make sure you go explore this city thoroughly as it has so much to offer for medium level players. Now Number 7. The new Sulfurous Naguas have an interesting buff with them where the blade they drop deals 15% increased damage against them. And since they can also be assigned on Slayer tasks, they offer one of the best combat training methods in the game. Inside the arena you have options for infinite prayer and infinite super combat potions. So if you combine the Sulfur Blades, the Slayer Helmet, Piety and Super Combat together, you can reach up to 120,000 combat experience per hour, which is one of the best training methods in the game. It's also a very decent moneymaker as the Sulfurous Blades sell for a good price. Number 8. The Colosseum has a reward system called Glory, which after completing certain amount of waves in the minigame, you are offered this glory as a reward. Once you reach certain tiers, you will unlock new activities all around the city. For example, at 8000 glory, you unlock new improved prices for the thieving activity, which gives you easier access to the houses and also more loot. At 12000 glory, the Ring of Dwelling gives you a new teleport option, which takes you directly to the Colosseum. At 16,000 glory, the Herb Patch just west of the city is now forever protected. As the glory is basically your personal best run in the Colosseum, you would need to make it to about wave 10, depending on the invocations, to unlock all the rewards the glory system has to offer. Number 9. The Hunter Skill Cape now works as a bank teleport just like the Crafting Cape. It has few seconds longer bank time, but if you're 99 Hunter and you go talk to the Guildmaster Apatura with the Hunter Cape in your inventory, she will unlock Hunter Guild teleport to your cape. Not only is it good for getting faster Hunter rumors, but it works as a bank option without the need to get 99 crafting or 
farming. Number 10. You can use the loot from Perilius Moon's minigame on the guide just nearby the chest for a chance to obtain the other Perilius Moon unique items. This activity is not profitable, as there is a high chance you might not receive any items at all. Players have reported back that they offered up to 10 unique items to the guide and received nothing back. But it's there just because certain people want to complete their collection logs as fast as possible and they have the money to spare. Currently the cheapest item to trade out is the Blood Moon Helm which goes for 500k each and you have a chance to obtain the Blood Moon Tassets which goes up to 4 million GP. So if you have some extra gold lying around and we're talking minimum of 100 million GP you can just buy the cheapest Perilous Moon Armor from GE and come swap it out here for other pieces. And one last thing before we end the video if you know any cool or fun facts about Varlamor that I missed out on, please leave them down below in the comments as other players can read them as well and let's share the knowledge together and that's all there is to it. Go try out Varlamor yourself right now. What are you waiting for? For this video to end? Well, it already did. 